Hello. Here we'll continue with um, obstructions in linear algebra. This time looking at ve um, abstract vector spaces connected by linear maps. Uh, actually, there's no really, no, nothing is changed here, no obstructions. Um, no formally um, happening at all. Uh, all the abstraction is that we can connect two arbitrary now vector spaces, not necessarily coordinate, and then the map between them is called linear. If two properties are satisfied as before, as for maps between coordinate vector spaces, uh, the map is additive for any pair of vectors in the source. Uh, it doesn't matter how we compute this. Uh, uh, we can compute the image of the sum of vectors, or we can map the vectors into the second vector space and sum them there. The result should be the same. And the second property is preservation of scaling. It again doesn't matter where we scale uh, before or after doing the map, the result will be the same. So that is uh, for all u and v in u and all the numbers. I'm using real numbers as scalars, but uh, as was mentioned before, any field will give a consistent story. Well, that is it for uh, the abstraction. Uh, the rest is just how we use it. And examples of such linear maps are abundant. They're very important. They're actually um, uh, probably the most one of the most important concepts in mathematics. The whole analysis, or calculus rather, is built on the idea of approximating functions by linear maps. Um, so let me recall the model, which we looked at before. Linear maps between coordinate vector spaces. And we saw that all of them are given by matrix multiplication. So the, there is a matrix, the matrix of this map, the matrix of size m by n, so that we can multiply an n vector with it uh, from the left multiply um, i by n vector and get an m vector. That is what we already uh, practiced um, uh, for some time. Look at a different example of vector spaces, say so vector space of matrices of arbitrary size m by n. Uh, there is a linear map into matrices where the dimensions are exchanged. And the map is taking the transpose. And the properties of the transpose are just uh, these properties. Well, one, um, a pair of properties are just guaranteeing that the map is linear. So the transpose of the sum is the sum of transpose. And then scaling uh, before or after transposing the matrix doesn't really uh, affect the result. More maps between vector spaces of matrices. Let's imagine the matrix some size and then um, something which we can multiply by it from the left matrices of size m by something and then multiplying such matrix uh, with a will give us a matrix of size l by n and uh, because of matrix multiplication properties, this is a linear map again. Uh, the uh, additivity comes from distributivity property. Scaling is um, even more straightforward. Mm. Uh, so another class of examples we had for abstract uh, um, vector spaces are spaces of functions. So let me now look at continuous functions on a closed interval from zero to one with real values. Uh, 
and uh, we have a linear map again borrowing from calculus we have a linear map uh, from this vector space into itself uh, we could be more specific where uh, this linear map lands but we could just say it is from uh, functions to continuous functions to continuous functions so if we have a continuous function what we can do what this map will do it uh, will replace it by a different continuous function uh, continuous function on an interval so at any point of the interval i should be able to give the value and the value is uh, the integral of the original function with limits 0 and x so graphically, that is uh, the area under the curve computed up to x. And of course, from calculus, we know that this is also a continuous function. It's actually even better. Uh, it's a differentiable function, but continuous in particular. And um, uh, we have a, a linear map because of the properties of integrals. Uh, they are additive and uh, scalars can be put um, through the integration sign formally so that um, uh, are just the lin linearity together linearity of this map. Uh, let me uh, complete here with uh, an important special case of a linear map. We will say that uh, a linear map Uh, yeah, a map is a linear isomorphism or just isomorphism of vector spaces so linear can be dropped uh, if we if we specify uh, uh, that we are dealing with vector spaces it will be um, a, um, an invertible linear map. So an invertible linear map is not just one map, but actually the two maps. So we have this original map F, and we should have the um, map going the other way, uh, the inverse, such that compositions are identities so the formalic statement is if we do f and follow with f inverse, uh, this is going this way. Uh, the composition is identity uh, on u. Otherwise, if we start with inverse and follow with f, that will be going this loop, and that is just the identity on v. And uh, one last remark. Uh, we don't need to ask that the inverse is also linear, it also satisfies these two conditions. Uh, it is automatically meaning that uh, automatically linear, meaning that um, yeah, we don't need to ask, it will have to satisfy these two conditions. Proving that is again a formal uh, but an interesting exercise, highly recommended. Well, that's it for now.